This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, let us solve a very simple problem so that we can understand the concept more clearly. So the problem is as given here. A car is moving along a straight line, say OP in figure. So a car is moving along a straight line. The direction is say OP, O to P. The car is moving from O to P in 18 seconds and it returns from P to Q. So from P it returns to Q in 6 seconds. What are the average velocity and average speed of the car in going from O to P and from O to P and back to Q? First it moves from O to P and then P to Q. So in these two cases what is the average velocity as well as average speed? That is the question. Okay. In the question, they have given that from O to P, the car moves in uh, how much time? Yes, the car moves in 18 seconds. And from returns from P to Q? In? Six seconds. So now we should find the average velocity and average speed from O to P in the first case. Okay. So let us solve this first case. What is the formula for this average velocity? We know that average velocity is nothing but displacement by time interval. Okay, displacement by time interval. This is nothing but average velocity and we already know we already know right the distance from o to p you can see in this figure what is the distance it is 360 meters isn't it so the dis the distance is 360 meters what is the time interval it is given in the question that is 18 seconds. So, 18 ones are, 18 twos are. So, the average velocity is plus 20 meter per second. Then, what about average speed? So, let us write the formula for average speed first average speed is given by path length by time interval okay So in the path length, again it is from O to P. So we know its value as 360 meter and the time interval is 18. So average speed is again, it is 20 meter per second. So thus in this case, the average speed is equal to the magnitude of average velocity. 
so average speed is equal to the average velocity so now moving to the second case this is the first case okay now moving to the second case so they have given to return from p to q it requires 6 seconds okay Again, we should find average velocity. In the second case, the displacement is given by from O to P and again back to Q. So here the final position is Q and Q is at 240 and the initial position is O and it is at 0. So the displacement is given by how much? Yes, it is given by plus 240 meters. Okay, then the time interval is given by time interval is given by from O to P first time interval and then from P to Q. So from O to P it is uh, given as how much? Yes. 18 seconds and from p to q return it is 6 so 18 plus 6 is 24 seconds so now we know the displacement as 240 and uh, the time interval as 24 seconds substituting these two values we can calculate in the formula of average velocity that is displacement by time interval so here the displacement is how much 240 and the time interval is 40 so the average velocity is 10 meter per second then we should also find average speed isn't it So again the formula for this average speed is given by path length by time interval. What is this path length? The path length is given by OP plus PQ, isn't it? And the time interval is delta T. And we know the distance OP, how much? S, it is 360 meters. And the distance PQ is 120 meters. Okay. Then the average speed is given by three sixty plus one twenty by the time is twenty four second. So that is given by three sixty by one twenty is four eighty by 24 so we get average speed as 20 meter per second so this is a very simple pro problem 
so in this case the average speed is not equal to the magnitude of average velocity isn't it both are different both are different so this happens because the motion here involves change in direction so that the path length is greater than the magnitude of displacement this shows that speed in general greater than the magnitude of velocity so now moving to the next important part that is instantaneous velocity and speed so in this part we are going to study about instantaneous velocity and speed so we know that the average velocity tells us how fast an object has been moving over a given time interval but it does not tells us how fast it moves at different instants of time during that interval so for this we define instantaneous velocity or simply velocity v at an instant t so if i say average velocity then that will give the velocity on average of all isn't it considering the whole time interval it will give the average velocity but if i want the velocity at a particular instant of time say i want a velocity at t1 i want a velocity at 3t so like that if i want a velocity at a particular instant of time then we can go for this instantaneous velocity or simply we can call velocity v at an instant t okay the velocity at an instant is defined as okay the velocity at an instant or the instantaneous velocity is defined as the limit of the average velocity as the time interval delta t becomes infinitely small okay the velocity at an instant or the instantaneous velocity is defined as the limit of the average velocity delta x by delta s yes it is average velocity as the time interval delta t tends to zero okay the limit of average velocity the limit of average velocity as the time interval becomes infinitely small so we can write it as dx by dt isn't it yes where this simple limit delta t tends to 0 stands for the operation of taking limit as delta t tends to 0 of the quantity on its right in the language of calculus if i want to say the quantity on the right hand side of this equation okay this limit one yes it is defined graphically in the language of calculus this quantity on the right hand side is the differential coefficient of x with respect to t so that we can write it as 
dx by dt differential coefficient of x with respect to t so it is the rate of change of position with respect to time but at that particular instant okay